Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian Primerts, Trevica Trade Group, and today is Tuesday, the 22nd of August. So let me get the camera situated over there. There we go. A little bit of a delay actually there with the camera. Um, happy Tuesday, everybody. Risk disclaimer in front of you. Everything that we're going through is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. So after yesterday, right, nice Monday to start the week. Um, did we have any continuation? Um, I think not. Um, that's a pretty easy answer uh question to answer um once again um you know some of what i talked about in, in yesterday's video um i thought the big question coming into today was um were we going to see a repeat of what we saw last week uh, remember last week the market charged higher on monday um, looked like it was trying to turn around. NVIDIA had a really nice day. Um, again, I'm talking, I'm referring to not yesterday, but a week ago. And, um, you know, NVIDIA had a really nice day. And then there was basically no follow through whatsoever. So um, kind of felt a little bit like today as well. And that's what I, I was a little bit afraid of. So here's the data in case um, you didn't watch yesterday's video or, or don't know what I'm referring to. But back on the 14th of August, NVIDIA was up um, NVIDIA was up uh, 7%. I guess it did have a little bit of follow through um, up up about uh, four tenths of a percent um, on the 15th. And then you could see kind of went a little bit negative, not too bad. Um, uh, yesterday it was up eight and a half percent. And then today it, um, it opened up higher and closed lower. So quite a reversal day. And yeah, the not exact same thing that we saw last week, but kind of similar. Um, and here's when we bring up the S, the um, the cues for last week. So one did worse, the other one did better. Um, here was last week, the cues were up 1.1%. Um, the following day, they were down 1%. And then we're down another couple of days, uh, 1%. Um, today, they were just fractionally down. I, you know, I guess there was a little bit of positives um, out of today. But overall, when you look at um, what areas did well um, from the open, um, there were not a lot, right? And that's one of the things that I, I generally look at um, throughout the day is percentage change from open. Um, was today more of a distribution day? Did people take the opportunity um, to sell into strength? Or did they start adding to things? And um, you, by the look of all the areas that were down, all the groups that were down over 1% today, uh, today was there was more selling pressure, right? There was more people who were um, selling the, the rip, um, which has kind of been the, um, the situation all August long. Uh, and the banks, the semis, which I'll talk about in just a minute uh, outside of uh, NVIDIA, of course, the solar names again hit, you know, talk about relative weakness. Um, that has been a group that's certainly been showing that. Um, and then the energy, which is kind of um, now a couple of the two days of the energy names going down or, you know, maybe seeing some some profit taking. So um, it does feel like a little bit of a, of a turnaround Tuesday repeat, not a turnaround Tuesday in a good way, but actually to the downside with um um, S&P down about a third of a percent, the Q's down just slightly as I just went over, the Dow down a half a percent, and IWM and um, and IWC, the micro caps, which were down the most today, uh, down close to three quarters of a percent. So um, we'll talk a little bit about what we saw, um, but you know, one of the things, you know, it is kind of difficult on these gap up days, which is basically what we saw today. Um, I'm using the S&P futures chart um, because, um, you know, I tend to use the, the S&P uh, futures because um, it does trade more uh, continuously around the clock. But um, one of my questions for the day was on the daily chart, um, you know, and it looked like it was going to be, you know, kind of a layup um, in the beginning of the day, but um, it wasn't um, whether or not price was going to stay above its five period moving average, which is this white line that I'm looking at now. So price stays below this and the trend, the short term trend remains down. Right. That's what I see on the daily chart. We made an attempt. We had an oversold bounce, but nothing really to kind of um, hang your hat on to get a little bit more positive in the short term about this market. Right. One, uh, you know, one small uh, victory for the day is that we did hang on to the bottom of value, um, which is forty three ninety two. 
but um, you know, this could easily be taken out in the overnight session. So I think what we're going to want to see tomorrow is for this level to hold and then maybe a bounce to kind of um, start to go back higher, right? The 80% rule is still in effect, right? The 80% rule, if not familiar with how that works using a value area, using volume at price, is once price gets into the value area, there's an 80% chance that price goes all the way through it. Um, again, it's not a 100% chance, it's an 80% chance. And if price moves back below 43.92, that will, um, that will negate the rule, right? And again, this is all in my write-up this morning, but um, here's where we are in terms of S&P. Um, before I get to the cues, we'll talk about breath a little bit, which I think I have, um, I don't have it up here. Maybe I have it on another screen, but um, uh, I, I should have it on another screen. Let's see. All right, so here we are. All right, so this is four week. So this, sorry, this is fifty-two week new highs for the S and P. Notice what's going on here. Right, this has been again the trend, you know, that we've seen all month long is that there's just a lot more new lows. Um, today there was fifteen in the S and P that made a fifty-two week low, and there was only four names that made a new high. Um, NVIDIA was one of those names. PWR, which was a name that I traded today. Uh, Lilly and Regeneron made um, new highs. And you could see many more names that uh, were to the downside. Also, and this gets more dramatic when we look at the four weeks. So basis, so a month, right? Well, there's only five names <laughs> that, that made a four-week new high today. Five, that's it. And 116 that made a new four-week low today. Um, that's pretty ugly, right? You could come up with some other adjectives, I guess, I suppose, but, um, overall, you know, this is, this is not what we want to see and not such a healthy market. Um, uh, again, the word that comes to mind comes to mind a lot in trading when you're going through one of these situations is patience. You have to have patience for this market. It is look at how difficult of, of an environment you in you are in if you're trying to be a stock picker. You've got um, 116 new lows and only five new highs for for the month. Now, again, like some people think, oh my God, this must be a great environment to short. I, I think it's very difficult to short too, because we're not really, um, you know, we haven't broken the value area for the, for the week, right? And, um, you know, after what we saw last week, right, which was the break below the 50-day moving average, you know, we're still um, in an uptrend on the weekly chart. Right. So, yes, in the short term, you know, perhaps that you can kind of short some of these rips to continue until the breath flips around. But ultimately, um, you know, this seems to be more of a waiting game than anything else. Um, cues, let's do the exercise here. Same thing. Well, you know, a little bit different. You know, cues were only down slightly for the day, even though they gave back. Um, they were the cues were leading going into the open today, and they gave back more of the um, the gains than the S and P did. Um, however, uh, the one silver lining here is that the price is still above its five period moving average. So, you know, there could be a kick save tomorrow, but ultimately, um, again, this is not the best price action. Here are the same thing: eighty percent rule triggered yesterday right for a move into the value area um, this is as far as we got again this was at eight o'clock this morning and then we began to kind of sell off um and um we are still in the value area for the for the week your support is down at 360 62 all right and then um it gets worse as we kind of go through um iwm uh, let's bring this up. Still hanging by a thread to the 200-day moving average. I, I think that'll be important for that to hold. Um, I think that'll be interesting to watch. Um, if you if you go to the one-hour chart, this is not inside the value area. This is just below. So you've got relative weakness this week so far um, in IWM. All right, and um, and I like to show the diamonds from time to time. This is kind of odd to me. Um, you know. Being that the Dow stocks, you know, 30 of the largest stock, stocks out there, um, this chart is is a bit similar on the on the one hour. Both 
the Dow stocks and IWM, which is small caps, are both showing relative weakness. I don't have a reason for that. I think I mentioned in yesterday's video. Um, just kind of odd to see that. Um, but um, for now, you know, could this be a triple bottom? Well, we don't know yet. And I would wait until basically these two highs are taken out. Um, if you, you know, if I were to play something to the long side in the diamonds, that's what I would be um, waiting for. Um, some confirmation that number one, we make it into the value area and also take out um, these two highs for the Dow. And here's what this looks like on the daily chart. Um, notice that this is that this closed back below the value area. Um, and again, a move back above here, I think would be somewhat positive, um, but for now it's not looking that healthy. One silver lining I would say um, is what TLT did today, right? We talked about in yesterday's video, I had a question, um, I think on Twitter, they're like, well, how long is that VPOC from? It doesn't matter. Um, the market remembers, right? Believe it or not, the market remembers. Um, and that's why these things are, are so significant. Right. And you could see we're trying to basically rebound. It's not a strong rebound from here. We're not, um, you know, above the five period moving average, but we're trying to stabilize around here. This is ZB, by the way. This is 30 year bond futures. Um, TLT, which I'm going to look at too. More people probably watch TLT than they do um, the 30 year bond futures. This also had a nice update. So let's see if this can build off of this. Remember, we got pretty, price got pretty sunken below the five period moving average. It needs another day of green to overcome this five period moving average. Um, one hour chart, what I basically would be watching here is for a move above, um, it's a, a, a um, continuation above 93.09, right? Right now it says bullish 80% rule. I would like to see it get a little bit further. Um, I did put on a small trade today in TLT, which I'm still wearing. So playing a little bit of a counter trend move, um, you know, and uh, I'm not, I won't be looking for a move all the way through the value area, but maybe halfway um, at this point, I think would be constructive. All right. So that's kind of a, a big, bigger picture review, right? I always start with the indices. We can go through a couple charts. Um, I don't have as many, you know, I was, you know, I was more enthused, um, of course, yesterday, um, you know, watching, you know, some of these areas of the market like semis do very well, but we just didn't get any follow through, right? Which was the big question coming into today. And in fact, you could see what happened to the semis here. They got rejected right at that bottom of value that also lined up with lines up with a 50 day moving average. So I would continue to watch this 152.76, but that is such a hard rejection. Um, again, similar to S&P, we didn't break below the five period moving average. So, um, you know, we're hanging on by a thread here, but, um, you know, disappointing to see such a strong day in the semis yesterday. And then to see such a rejection, um, only down 1% for the day, you know, you look at that and you say, okay, well, it's not that bad. It's just the fact of how much, um, how much profit taking and how much selling that that group saw today. The, the um, SMH ETF was down 2.3% from the open, right? And I think that puts things in perspective. Other areas that, um, you know, the retail group and the banks really hurting pretty badly today, um, you know, there's, there was a couple names. I'm not going to go over all them, but um, XRT did break back below the 200-day moving average. This has been a really difficult chart all year long. I ha You haven't heard me really talk too much about retail uh, because I think retail companies are very difficult. You know, I think that you really have to know what's going on, um, you know, with a particular retailer or consumer company. Um but um, this is showing weakness, um, you know, and evidenced by a couple of names that reported earnings today, Dick Sporting Goods, Macy's, and um, I think it was what um, Kohl's as well that went down quite a bit. Remember, this is an equally weighted ETF, but um, the whole group down 2.8% for the session. One area which is not really a consumer name, I don't think, or maybe it is, I'm not sure how you would classify it, is this um, BRBR. I think this is more of a play, you know, on weight loss, right? And um, you could say what you want about the, the American consumer, but I think there's a need for these products right now. They make Power Bar, um, they make protein shakes, and um, this is Bell Ring Brands. Really nice move to the upside. So again, not in the S&P. That's why it did not come up on the, um, on the list there, but pretty strong. Um, I mentioned the name that I traded today, right? It's PWR. 
made some nice consolidation. Yes, this name is extended when you look at the weekly chart, right? This has been straight up this year, but um, nobody knows how long a trend is going to um, last. So I do like the consolidation and, um, you know, I will be playing this and I, I did take a profit target on this today, but, um, you know, ultimately I'm looking for continuation. Um, you know, and maybe a move all the way up to 216, right? That's that's a that's a that would be a decent move um, after this um, run that it's already made. All right, so let me uh, conclude the video. So here's the um, so of course we have two more uh, we have two big events this week. We've we've got Nvidia earnings that are after the close. Um, we'll see what we get. I think the the implied move is around 11 percent for earnings. Um, I think this is going to be very challenging. Um, I would think if if Nvidia manages to not do much, you know, I think this is one place where you can maybe sell some premium, right? I think that they're the leader um, in the group, but they're very expensive. They've always been an expensive company. You know, I know people love to say this on Twitter, and it gets attention that like how many times price to sales is, or what the valuation metrics. But this is this has always been a company that is always expensive. Like every time if you've bought Nvidia through the life of its company, it it is always been a tough um a, a, a tough um name to grasp in terms of valuation because it's never been a cheap company um but it is the leader in the group and we'll it'll be interesting to say what they you know what they have to say about what they view the um the future prospects of this and you know it could be a sell the news event right we talk about that all the time it's one of my favorite sayings you hear me say it over and over and over buy the rumor, sell the news. And if I had to guess, because I don't have a crystal ball, I think it's going to be a similar type of event for tomorrow, right? Um, and I think selling premium might be a good idea. Yes, the last two quarters, this has gone up 24 and 14%, but um, the company usually doesn't do that that frequently. There's been There's a number of other quarters in here where the stock actually goes down or the stock doesn't go up you know, 11%. So I, that's, if I had to play it, that's the way I would play it. Look, if we're looking for an upsize move, I think one name that I'll be looking at for tomorrow is maybe SMCI. So depending on how much they mentioned um, or how robust they talk about, um, about the AI trend, um, if it's really, if it's continued to be really robust, um, I think this may be a name to play. And I'll pro probably play this via a call spread, right? So the less premium to put at stake as possible is always the way that I think about earnings trades. Um, so it's a nice way to kind of have a little bit of some exposure in case um, something is really said um, very strongly about AI. I think this company is the one to kind of play. But um, you know, that's the risk of always with an earnings trade is that you could lose the premium. That's why I would do a call spread rather than just outright calls. Um, and then the other thing to, to consider is if the if NVIDIA and the group get sold off, then I, I would be more of a buyer <clears throat> um, for the long term if price gets down to 224. All right. So that's a couple things that um, I'm watching. The second event for the week is going to be uh, Powell. Um you know, he's going to have a speech at Jackson Hole. I, again, I hate to say it, but I'm not expecting much. I, I just don't know what why he would make any major um, announcement, considering they are watching what inflation is doing and what the jobs data is doing. Um, neither one of them are really budging that much um, from what we've seen over the last couple months. So I don't think he's going to make any, any uh, major announcement announcement about stopping raising interest rates, I think they're still in the wait and see approach. So that's my take. Um, I, I hope that helps a little bit. Um, and I think overall, uh, you know, looking at how this market has been trading and, and um, you know, the breadth that, um, you know, again, the breadth was not good yesterday either. Um, so it's just been um, horrible all month. Um, to me, that means just be patient uh, with your trades. All right, guys, have it and your exposure. Have a great night, everybody. See you tomorrow.